Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Friday. Can you believe that it's already Friday? Can you believe you have spent the entire week with moi? <laughs> Painting and exploring and making creations? It's been a pretty amazing week. So thank you, boys and girls, for joining me every day this week. And I hope you had super fun like I did. I had so much fun this week. Because Monday we made that slimy slime, remember? I made the teal slime. Yeah, that was really sticky, wasn't it? And then on Tuesday we painted that super fun Easter Bunny canvas. And we had a little pop-in visit from our Easter Bunny friend. What a sneaky little bunny. And then on Wednesday we made homemade Play-Doh. And oh, I really like that purple Play-Doh. Do you know what? I was still playing with that this morning. I was. And on Thursday we made sock bunnies and Maggie was here for sock bunnies. Yeah, Maggie popped in and made some sock bunnies with us. So that was super fun. I'm so glad that she did that with us. And then on Friday, which is today, we're painting plaster pets. So you should have only one thing left in your bags, boys and girls, from your week of fun at Get Messy and L. So inside your bags, and these were just kind of given out individually to boys and girls. So you might have a bunny that sits up like this, and you might have a bunny that's kind of like uh, sideways like this and you might have um, another little teensy tiny bunny in there. So there's a variation of three different types of bunnies and we're going to paint them today. So using the paint that's inside your kit um, you can choose whatever paint you want. Maybe you want to have a really festive Easter bunny and you're going to paint them pink or purple or teal or white like super fun colors. But maybe you're just going to paint a brown bunny and give him a brown bunny with some like pink inside the ears and pink eyes and a little black nose with some whiskers. So whatever you decide to paint your plaster pet bunny, um, that's totally cool. So boys and girls here at Get Messy, we have tons and tons of plaster pets. And I don't know if you can see them kind of hiding in the case behind me, but there's all different types of options. We have octopus and we have owls and we have um, like gaming PlayStation ones that open up and we have hockey banks and pineapple holders and oh my goodness, the possibilities are endless. There's so many of them and you can come in to get messy whenever we're open and you can come and choose one of these plaster pets and paint them. You can sit down and have some fun and relax and paint your plaster pet and then we're going to give you some Mod Podge, if you would like that. And Mod Podge is actually like a secret kind of glue. And it, and it dries clear. So that when you coat over your plaster pet with the Mod Podge, after it's completely dry, then your, your creation will be able to stay nice and safe and secure underneath that Mod Podge for a really long time. Yeah, isn't that cool? So it'll stay nice and safe. So boys and girls, while you're painting your plaster pets, I would really love to read an Easter story to you to end off our week. Um, Miss Messy isn't going to paint a plaster pet with you today. I'm just going to leave that to you, boys and girls, because I think you can do a really super awesome job. And while you're painting your plaster pets and having lots of fun with them, I'm going to read you a royal Easter story about princesses and how they are enjoying their Easter festivities. So boys and girls, get out your materials, lay them all out in front of you. It's always nice to have your surface protected. So maybe if moms and dads are a little bit worried about the paint, you can wear an apron like Miss Messy has. Look at my tutu apron. Isn't that fun? You can wear an apron and put it on to cover your clothing. Roll up your sleeves, because that's important too. We don't want to get any paint on our sleeves. So roll them up and try to wear things that you don't mind if they get kind of messy, okay? That's really important. Wear a little bit of older clothing so that you don't mind if they get messy, okay? And then spread out all of your materials. So all your little pots of glue that or paint that you have, sorry, take the lids off them all and kind of open them up around your um, surface area. And if you want, you can get like a little plate or a little strip of tin foil because sometimes you can mix the colors together to make new colors. Did you know that, boys and girls, that you can mix paint together to make new colors? You can. And actually, I'm going to show you that. Give me two shakes of a lamb's tail, and I will be right back to show you how you can mix colors together to make new colors. 
<laughs> Hi, sorry about that, boys and girls. I just wanted to run and grab some things because I think that's a really cool lesson and it's something important that you need to learn as you get older how to mix colors. So in art, when you're painting, we have three primary colors and those colors are three colors that we cannot recreate. Okay, they're called the primary colors and they're red, a yellow, and blue. And I bet some of you really love these colors. And when you mix two of these colors together in different combinations, they make new colors and those new colors are called secondary colors. I know, that's a lot of information, isn't it, boys and girls? So I went and got a plate and I got some popsicle sticks because I want to show you the new colors that they make, all right? So first of all, I'm gonna use red. So when you mix red and yellow together, they make a new color, okay? So I have red and yellow put on my plate. And I'm gonna show you, boys and girls, what happens when you mix them together. And if you can see, hang on now, let me just lay my plate down for a second so I can show you the new color that they make. Oh, it's already working. Can you see that? So the red and the yellow mixed together, boys and girls, made the color red and yellow together, it makes orange. Ah, that's a cool trick, isn't it? So now I'm gonna show you what happens when we use that red again. So I'm gonna squirt out some red, but now I'm gonna mix it with blue. Sneaky, sneaky. And what happens when you mix red and blue together? Can anybody guess what'll happen when we mix the red and the blue together? Mm. Let me see. So I'm gonna mix them together and actually it makes one of my favorite colors. And depending on how much red you put into it or how much blue you put into it, you can make different shades of that color. <gasps> it's working. Boys and girls, I made purple. Look, so when you mix red and blue together, it makes purple. <laughs> How super cool is that? Okay, let's see what else. Let's see what happens when we mix blue and yellow together. Okay, so I put out my blue and yellow. So let's see what happens when we mix them together. Does anybody have any guesses? Oh, it's working. Oh my gracious me. So boys and girls, when I mix the blue and yellow together, I did just hear a friend say it, you get the color green. Ha <laughs> ha. So boys and girls, we just made three new colors. So we started off with three colors, red, blue, and yellow, and we mixed them together. And we made three new colors, green, orange, and purple. How super cool is that? So if you only have the primary colors, you can mix them and make new colors and then you'll have six colors. Look. So when your plaster pet is dry, you can do all kinds of things. Look at his spots, boys and girls. What do our spots look like? Look. A heart, that's right, just like Miss Messy's cheeks. And you can use a marker, a black marker, and you can go back around and do some highlighting or adding some more detail if you'd like. Okay, so I'm gonna leave him here just for inspiration because you can really do anything. The sky's the limit. Maybe you wanna make a, a pattern bunny with pink stripes and yellow stripes and pink stripes and yellow stripes. Maybe you wanna make a realistic bunny, a brown bunny with pink eyes or blue eyes. It's totally up to you. The possibilities are endless. Easter has arrived. Princesses everywhere are enjoying the spring season. They are. Cinderella's there, and it looks like a beautiful day. 
Snow White does some spring cleaning and the dwarfs help her scrub, dust and mop. Soon, the cottage is sparkling inside and out. I just love Snow White. She's so kind. She has such a nice, warm heart. Belle is planting flowers in Beast's garden. And Mrs. Potch pitches in and gives the flowers a drink. What a great help Mrs. Potts is. And look at the beast over there with some butterflies swarming around him. They must know that he's not that scary at all. Rapunzel paints Easter de decorations on the tower walls. And Pascal, that silly little chameleon, blends in nicely with the springtime colors. Can you see him over there hiding against an Easter egg? Silly Pascal, I really like him, he's so funny. Merida hides Easter eggs for her brothers. Uh-oh, it looks like they've already found some chocolates. Look at their faces. I love Merida, she's so brave, isn't she boys and girls? She's a very brave princess. Scuttle has an Easter surprise for Ariel from the human world. The Little Mermaid isn't sure what it is, but she sure loves it. It looks like a very large golden egg. I wonder if the prince has sent that to her. I bet. Cinderella makes Easter bonnets for all of her friends, and now they are ready for a parade. An Easter parade, what fun. That sounds like a very magical day. And Tiana bakes a sweet Easter treat. Yummy, delicious. Oh my gosh, boys and girls, that's one of my favorite things about Easter is all the yummy treats. The cheesecakes and the brownies and oh, I just love it. What a great surprise for the Royal Easter as Tiana makes all those treats. So boys and girls, I hope you had a super fun week. I can't wait to see your beautiful plaster pets that you've painted. Please tag us here at Get Messy and L and show us all of your beautiful creations. If you want, you can send them to us in an inbox message and we'll post them. We can't wait to see how hard you boys and girls have been working this week. And we can't wait to see all your amazing creations. And we hope that you're excited and ready to go back to school on Monday. I'm sure your teachers miss you a ton and they can't wait to hear about your Easter vacation. Boys and girls, thanks for joining Miss Messy this week as we celebrated Easter, and I hope you guys had a great time with me because I had a ton of fun with you. And please join our YouTube channel where you can watch Miss Messy and Maggie all the time and see all kinds of adventures that we have. All right, happy Easter. Thanks for joining in. We had so much fun. Bye.